Hello and welcome to Mystery Behind History, one other episode where I dive into history and come with so many interesting and inspiring stories that are so 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 crucial in what happens on the field and it's so subtle that it happens in front of us also and we don't really understand but it's very important to know these stories because cricket is a wonderful game and with these stories it becomes even better. 2004 Australia there's a sense of excitement in the air as the Indian team that's travelled to Australia is doing well. Unlike all the previous teams, this Indian team is really doing well under Saurabh Ganguly. The first test match ends in a draw. The second test match, Ricky Ponting scores a double hundred. In reply, Rahul Dravid scores a double hundred. And India win at Adelaide. Third test match, Australia really really do well and win that one at their own backyard. Now fourth test match, the series moves on to Sydney. The only issue for India so far is that their main man, Sachin Tendulkar, has scores of 0, 1, 37, 0 and 44. Rather poor series by the standards set by Sachin Tendulkar, it was a very very poor series. And that was one issue because that crunch game in Sydney, the winner wins the series, was so so important that you needed Sachin Tendulkar, somebody like Sachin Tendulkar to you know, perform well, because you don't have Rahul Dravid performing every day, though he was doing that in that series, but certainly you needed somebody else to step up. Now the only issue was that every analyst, commentator, fan, or even the Australian team sort of noticed a pattern in the way Sachin was getting out in that series. Every time he would poke outside the off stump and an edge would fly to the slip cordon or the wicket keeper. And that would be rather rather disappointing because every dismissal like that would look ugly on television, would just look ugly by the standards that I said were set by Sachin Tendulkar. High standards and you don't see him do the same mistake again and again. Now before the fourth test match, that crunch game, Sachin makes this statement that is rather weird for each and every Australian that was there over there and every Indian could not even understand what that statement was to be very honest. The thing he said was, that I won't play the cover drive in the fourth test match. Now that means he's cutting down 60 degrees of a 360 degree ground. He's cutting down 60 degrees and he can get, get so many runs. It was almost his favourite shot till then, but he was cutting down. 60 degrees and he was rather gutsy to cut down 60 degrees, especially when he said that verbally. Then every commentator, every analyst, every Indian analyst as well, I'm not only talking about the Australians, every Indian you know, person who was to deal with all these things that were happening on the ground said, ah, Sachin is just saying that sort of to be mentally strong. But obviously if the ball's pitched up out there, he's going to lean into the drive, he's going to score boundaries over there. It's not that he's going to get an edge every time, he's certainly going to hit them through cover. But Sachin was determined that he's not going to do that. The test match started in India in a spot of bother and Sachin comes out to bat. Now Sachin and VVS Lakshman both are batting. And obviously for the first few balls Sachin you know, stays very very true to his word. He keeps on defending them. Anything outside off stump he would leave them comfortably. Or he would just tap them but he won't drive them through the covers. He was continuously, you know, Australians were trying to tempt him because even they had heard that statement. They were trying to tempt him. They are continuously bowling outside the off stump. All Sachin would do is leave it. Or he would move across and play it straight down the ground, but he would not play the cover drive. A spinner came on, Simon Catridge came on, he would bowl those loopy Chinaman deliveries outside the off stump, forcing Sachin to go for it, and Sachin would move across and flick it through mid wicket or pull it through square leg. That is all what Sachin was doing for that many, many hours that he batted. He ended up scoring 241, stayed true to his word, and didn't play a single cover drive. Now so many people just would look at that 241 and say, oh what a wonderful innings. But what about the fact that he cut down on one shot, he cut down on 60 degrees of the angle of the field and ended up doing that. That makes that 241 so much more um, effective. The fact that that test match was so crucial for India because you don't want Australia to win that test match because they would have won the series. And because of that such intense look at innings, we managed to draw the test match. India scored 705 for 7 declared. And runs just kept on coming from everywhere. Everybody started chipping in and scoring. A small, small contribution made India get to 705. And obviously, Sachin's 241 not out was very, very crucial. Obviously, we don't have to forget what VVS Lakshman did at the other end. He scored another 178 himself. Sachin would always, always say, you know, in many, many interviews, that I was so jealous of Lakshman because I would see him play those cover drives in front of me and I would feel, you know what, even if I go and bat on the other end, Brett Lee is bowling at me. At that pace, I would love to smash him through the covers. But then that mental energy would seek in. He would be very, very calm from inside and say, no, I'm not going to play the cover drive. And that actually you know, increased the respect for Sachin Tendulkar because I remember this wonderful story that uh, Saya Mekher, she's an Indian actress, she narrated 
uh, on his birthday was that she had gone to see Sachin play. It was Sachin's last test match in Australia. There was a couple that had come to watch the game, both 90 plus, and both Australians, typical Australians, not Indians at all. They were both Australians. And the first thing when they came to know that it's Sachin's last test match, they started crying. Australians started crying because of an Indian. And because of an Indian retiring, I mean, where do you see such admiration for an Indian in Australia? Probably Virat Kohli now, but Sachin Tendulkar in that era, everybody admired him. And they were literally crying because they felt that they will never ever see a player like that. And in the 90 years that they've lived, they've never seen a player like him. And that was something that touched every Indian fan, that story. Because the sort of respect and admiration for an Indian player in Australia was never seen before. Obviously over the years it kept on coming with many many Indian batting legends that we produced but certainly for Sachin Tendulkar that was very very special and that just showed you that those typical knocks of 241, the Sharjah knock of you know that 100 that he scored against Australia in 1998, the desert storm innings, these small small innings you know shaped his career but personally for me that 241 without that cover drive that sort of mental energy that sort of mental strength against possibly the best bowling lineup of his era in their backyard was rather special that helped India draw the test match it didn't give Australia the series obviously it didn't come to us as well but didn't give Australia the series and we drew it one all which made it even more special and we had so many heroes in that test match typically searching for that last test match it was just fantastic go back and watch the highlights of this game and you'll say how did he not hit even one cover drive? Now, for more such stories, tune in because we're going to come up with so many, many exciting, inspiring, interesting stories and that you all will love because cricket is a super, super exciting game and stuff that has happened in front of our eyes and we don't even know about it excites us even more.